the party ZANU-PF is concerned about the serious allegations made by three MDC ladies who allege that they were subjected to abduction, torture and forced disappearance following their holding of an illegal demonstration in Warren Park on the 13th of May 2020. The party welcomes the position taken by government to investigate these allegations to their fullest conclusion in order to unmask the circumstances of what actually happened, which led to the alleged disappearance of the ladies in question. ZANU-PF is government and membership abhors torture any forms of forced disappearances and any form of harassment or violation of the rights of individuals under whatever form. And that is why the country, under the leadership of ZANU-PF, is a signatory and state party to various international instruments and protocols which obligate the state to adhere to the observation of human rights and freedoms. We are, however, taken aback by the manner in which these alleged abductions are said to have taken place, which has raised a lot of questions than answers. Firstly, the alleged abductions followed what indeed was a needless political exercise in Warren Park, which happened against the COVID-19 lockdown regulations as provided for in statutory instrument one of 177 of 2020. At a time when the whole world is seized with containing the spread of COVID-19, with Zimbabwe doing reasonably well at least thus far, it does not make sense why the opposition activists decided to endanger the lives of the communities in Warren Park by engaging in such a needless demonstration. Besides, this story raises serious suspicions among all right-thinking people as it follows a similar script that once played out in 2019, involving one Dr. Magombei, who in a similar style announced to the world that he had been abducted before he turned out a few days ago, a letter, announcing again that he had found himself. The process of investigating the Magombei abduction was scuttled by interested parties who whisked him away from the country, making it difficult for the law enforcement agents to investigate the circumstances. This was before it turned out that the whole allegation of abduction was a stage managed script by opposition political parties whose fortunes we all know have been on a free fall. This has raised concerns that this whole abduction allegation was a well choreographed script by and large similar to the previous series of fake abductions whose purpose has been none other than undermining ZANU-PF, its government, and its leadership. The storyline by the opposition party is that the alleged abductions were purportedly in retaliation for the illegal demonstrations that took place in Warren Park on the 13th of May. But the images from the demonstrations which we have watched circulating show the presence of non male elements who claim to have organized such demonstrations alongside the three ladies. But the world is not told why the three ladies were, why the three males were not arrested, let alone violated. The major, major question is why could the ladies have been the targets while the male organizers of the regrettable demonstration were left out? Thirdly, the manner in which these allegations were announced to the public by one of the faction of the splitting opposition parties, accusing the ruling party of having been 
behind the alleged abductions shows clearly that, that this could have been a rehearsed script aimed at evoking people's emotions in their favor, thereby diverting attention from the ongoing internal fights in the opposition party. Fourthly, the world was made to believe that the ladies suffered, at least in their own ways, and those of the opposition mouthpieces, and I quote, serious and bad injuries. And that, I again quote, they were brutalized and sustained serious bruises, I end of quote. The usual embassies, whose hands remain uncleaned with regards to the previous fake abductions, we are seen on social media disseminating inaccurate information, which by and large appeared to be an endorsement of the alleged abductions. As it turned out, weeks after these regrettable allegations were raised, the alleged victims are yet to show the world the serious injuries which they claim to have suffered, besides disfiguring their faces in front of cameras. We as ZANU-PF took strong objection to these tired attempts to present ZANU-PF, its leadership and our government as a villain. The timing and manner in which these alleged abductions were raised leaves a lot to be desired. It is clear that these alleged abductions were intended to coincide with the convening by His Excellency the President and First Secretary of the Party, Comrade E. D. Mnangagwa, of the Sadak Troika Summit on Mozambique, which was attended by regional leaders. The allegations also happened at the time the U.S. Committee on Foreign Relations was preparing to meet to deliberate on the removal of Agribank and IDBZ from the illegal sanctions they imposed on this country, and as we all know, at the request of the MDC and its supporters. We therefore have strong reasons to suspect that this was an attempt to, de to replay the same tricks in order to sustain an orchestrated agenda to smear the government of Zimbabwe, ZANU-PF, and its leadership. We welcome the decision taken by the security organs of the state and government to investigate this matter to its fullest conclusion and should leave, they should leave no stone unturned to unmask the circumstances surrounding this dramatic episode. We are of course saddened to hear that despite pleas by the law enforcement agents for the ladies in question to cooperate in the investigations, they are reportedly uncooperative, choosing rather to communicate to NGOs who are not law enforcement agencies in this country. They are also communicating to hostile news media elements and social media all these cannot investigate allegations that have taken place in Zimbabwe. We call upon the ladies to understand that this is a serious matter and that the allegations they've made are serious and deserve serious attention by law enforcement agencies. This is no play matter. ZANU-PF will not allow that these allegations die a natural death. We insist upon thorough investigations so as to bring such to finality. Failure by the three lady complainants to, to cooperate with the police will lead to no other conclusion but that the alleged allegations are fake, stage managed, cooked and manufactured in Harvest House. We also draw the attention of the three lady complainants that making fake and stage-managed allegations is criminal conduct. The onus to prove that there was an abduction lies squarely on the shoulders of the three lady complainants. 
we should provide substantive evidence of what transpired rather than being hostile to law enforcement agents. We find it abhorrent that to date neither the three lady complainants nor family members nor their friends have made a formal report to the police suggesting of course that they don't want the truth to come out. In the same vein, we also encourage the law enforcement agents to take action against the uncalled for violations of the COVID-19 lockdown regulations, which resulted in those youth elements engaging in a needless political demonstration in Warren Park, risking, risking the lives of communities there. There was no justification whatsoever to violate the regulations as directed by our government. ZANU-PF also welcomes the position of government as expressed in the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade's Comrade S. Bimo's statement that diplomatic missions must always exercise their duties diligently and avoid commenting on the internal affairs on Zimbabwe, more so commenting on serious issues out of ESA and social media sensational, sensationalization. It is always desirable and advisable to wait for the outcomes of investigations so that they can comment authoritatively and factually rather than rely on unsubstantiated claims of individuals with entrenched and vested interests in cases such as this. We felt that we should, the voice of the party should be heard on this issue, which is tarnishing or seeking to tarnish the image of ZANU-PF, of our government and its leadership. I thank you.